Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Evil Rabbit. We do have our Mazda CS wheel. We're gonna be changing the wheel out on it today for our lightweight sim wheel from NRG. So it's a very simple process, but is it going to make a big difference is what I'm very curious to see. So obviously we do have to take these six screws out of the top of the wheel and make sure you are careful with it because it does go straight through the wheel into the quick release. And they are extremely long screws. So they go all the way through through to the quick release. So And they have Loctite on them. So they are a little bit on the uh, tough side initially. I would be better with an electric tool. But I'm trying not to uh, strip any of these out. So this is very similar process as the on the RS wheel as well. Except the, with the ring would have to be taken off first with the horn button. This does not have a horn button on it. So we don't have to worry about that which makes this process a whole lot easier. And the idea is to see if it makes that big of a difference for me going back up to a 350 millimeter wheel from the 320 that this is. So we're going to get all of these six screws out. And I'll show you what I mean by be, be careful with the uh, harness on the back side. So there is only a certain few wheels that would actually work. I'll show you with the couple wheels I have. If you don't want the buttons to be hit or anything like that, you need straight spoke wheels versus uh, angled spokes. So one more. And the quick release started spinning underneath. So we're going to try and hold all of this in place. Get this off. Okay, so we're going to get that off. We're going to take the wheel off. And what's cool that there's still a Mazda logo in the center of the CS wheel. We're going to put this to the side. Now, it goes all the way through, as you can see, straight through to the quick release. There's a single connector in there that's glued. Be very careful that it doesn't drop out. And then we're going to put this back down here. So when I said you need wheels with flat spokes, so this one, you can see the wheels would fit perfectly without contacting any of the buttons or anything like that. But if you take, say, this NRG wheel, you can see it would be contacting the buttons because the way the spokes are angled upwards. Now, if you were to take like a deep dish wheel, that is not going to make any difference as my tool rolls off my table because the buttons are still there. So a deep dish wheel works. But for sake of a flat spoke wheel, you're going to want to use one that is straight like that. So what we need to do is just get this through, but we have to get it through and into the top hole of the quick release, which is kind of a challenge in itself. Is everything moving around? Where are you? There you are. All right, so once we get the first one somewhat indexed, the other ones should be slightly easier twist the quick release on the bottom so the screw indexes into there and then all of them should be fully indexed and i actually like how they kept the maza in the center so you can actually still see the maza logo i was wondering if i was gonna have to put a sticker on there because i haven't taken this wheel off but the maza logo is still in the center so i think the neo chrome with the black does still look extremely nice so now we're gonna spin these all the way in We'll start with the top the top one and the bottom one just to kind of index our steering wheel on our base. So a very simple thing, just a couple things you need to watch out for, like the wiring harness on the back side of the quick release is something you want to watch out for. Um, and of course, if you're changing it to an, uh, any type of aftermarket wheel, make sure you get one that has a straight style spoke other than the angled spokes that would hit the button. But if you're doing a deep dish wheel, it's not going to really make a difference because the deep dish wheels will clear all the buttons. So we will do a look at the RS wheel, take apart the RS wheel a little bit. If you guys want to see the RS wheel or if you are all purchasing CS wheel, but you could also do just the quick release itself. I know Mazda has a sale going on right now of their new style quick release. I believe their quick releases are, I think, 50 bucks. 50 or 60 bucks right now you can get just the quick release and then put any steering wheel on just the quick release and run it on the r9 base which is a lot of drifters are doing 
And we're gonna get that this fully tightened in. Then we're gonna get it on the rig and go take it for a spin. So a simple, quick process, but it actually works out quite well. Everything still works. So we're gonna go get this on the rig and we're gonna give it a full send. All right, so we're here on the rig in a VDC server on Texas. We have the wheel with the 350 millimeter energy innovations neochrome wheel. We're gonna pop this baby on and we're gonna go full send here and we're gonna see if we can actually notice a big difference. And off the rip, I can definitely tell a, a bit of a difference already with just the placement of my hands on the wheel. We have to adjust the feedback slightly. Push that one wide. Got lost in the smoke. So overall, definitely feels good to be back on a full-size wheel. I can definitely tell the difference. So we're going to go full send. As we're getting pushed around, it's fine. So I definitely feel a little bit of a seat placement, maybe possibly a seat placement change that I'm gonna have to do because of the rim being bigger, my arms are a little bit uh, in a different position or it's just something I'm gonna have to get used to. downshifted way too early there so i could definitely tell a big difference with uh, the larger diameter wheel i do like how it feels so we're probably going to be sticking with this and running the larger diameter wheel um may have to change my feedback a little bit because if you know there's a little bit of stepping going on so may have to fine tune some settings nice tight line there bit of a twitch there but overall not too bad of ooh, not too bad of a run nope I guess anyways so definitely uh, something a little different going to a bigger wheel from the smaller wheel but you know something that I've been wanting to do for a little bit of time so we did get that change today so if you guys like this you guys want to see more if you guys want to see something about the RS wheel and the disassembly of that and how that would be a little bit different let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys are rocking a quick release with oh that man just died with just a wheel let me know down below as well on the R9 One final full send run. I do feel it's a bit smoother on a full size rim for myself personally. It's what I'm used to driving, so. Oh yeah, we got it. So that's gonna do it for me here on this episode here on a set of course. A uh, little wall tab, little wall tab. Maybe get one more lead or one more chase. Make sure you guys follow me on all social media. All you found in the description box below. As always, I thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track. That was a little bit of a stall on my part. Oh! Stayed in there a little bit too much. Oh, man, that was fun.